Uh, the Fed obviously has pivoted. Now even the balance sheet looks like it's going to um, go away. You know, they're going to keep a, a pretty hefty chunk of reserves in the system. So maybe the balance sheet runoff ends at the end of this year. Now there's even talk about this new sort of price level targeting or some variation of that where they're going to allow inflation to overshoot above 2% uh, for as long as needed to compensate for the persistent undershoot that we've seen. So all of it is a, is a, a more dovish tilt, mm -hmm. not only kind of for the cycle, but even beyond that. So I think the Fed has already communicated all of that. So I, I don't think there's anything really new coming out today that, that, the, that would be a surprise to the markets. Yeah, and you have three reasons why the market's narrative is about to improve. The Federal Reserve is one of those. What are the other two you're in? Well, one of them is is China. So, China, you know, I've been waiting for months and months for the, the the Chinese reflation to happen because every two years they go through these little cycles and then they kind of pump some new credit into the system. And it looks like that's actually finally happening now. January showed uh, a, a record increase in aggregate financing, as it's called. And even though there's a, a seasonal element to it, it's still a really big number, 4.6 trillion yuan. So maybe we're finally getting that kind of that, that, that pumping up of the Chinese economy at a time when the trade fears maybe are, are, are settling down as well. And then finally, on the earnings front, you know, earnings estimates have been falling off a cliff um, and a lot of talk about an earnings recession, et cetera. Uh, but it, I see some stabilization now in the last few weeks. So the market has been kind of hoping for a V-shaped earnings um, bottom to kind of match the V-shaped price bottom that we see since uh, December. And it's still early days, but it looks like maybe uh, the earnings front is starting to stabilize. And that means maybe in 2019, uh, we'll get, you know, 5% earnings growth. And then the hope is that we go back to 11. So all of this is to say that the narrative, I think, mm -hmm. is improving. And it certainly explains why we've recovered about 75% of the, of the decline from December. Yeah, and given that you believe that the market snapped back in January then is justified and is it fair given earnings expectations? Yeah, well, first of all, the 20% decline should never have been a 20% decline. It should have been maybe 10 to 15, but there were circumstances, you know, a lack of liquidity, uh, liquidation of crowded sort of momentum trades. Um, so the fact that we have recovered a lot I think is in part due just because of the sentiment extreme. And, and by the way, uh, the sentiment extreme continues. You know, in December, investors were selling stocks at a rate of 89 billion a year. And you would think after an 18 percent rebound that that would have diminished. But they're now selling at a rate of 113 billion dollars a year. So people still hate this rally. And I think everyone is looking down the road, um, um, looking for the other shoe to fall, looking for that recession in 2020. And there are really no signs of it. So I'm not surprised by the, by the rebound. Um, you know, whether we can continue on that track is, is a whole other story. But, uh, but I think the market at these levels actually makes sense here.